Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade, where today we are going to be diving into the Chain Dart and Scimitar, uh, the new hero class that has been introduced in Season 14. So I've kind of been doing a little bit of testing on it, been playing around in it with sort of 50 or so battles now, trying to get the hang of it. I guess it's always worth saying, I've played heavy armour for like three years now, switching to a light armour class, is a little bit of a step change, and I'm always pretty slow and a bit thick at these sort of things, so bear with me as we go through this. But it has been quite interesting to kind of see how fragile light armor classes are, but also test out the new class, see some of its strengths, see some of its weaknesses, and kind of get a feel for what it's all about. So I guess we should probably break this video down into a few parts. Let's start off with looking at the skills and how they work. Obviously, this is a light armor class, so that means you're going to always be very fragile. But your skills on this class are kind of like the pike, they're pre-selected. You basically have four to pick, you, you, know, you, you know, you have four, you don't get to pick any of them. You can obviously move them around their position on your hotbar, but it's not like a normal class, say like short boat, where you've got lots of different skills and options which you can pick from. So you have four main abilities. They have a leap and slash. This is your primary damage ability. This is what at least is going to do the most damage, at least if you're a strength build like I am. You have Snorp Scorpion Snare. This is where basically when you're near an enemy hero, you can activate this. You'll almost sort of teleport behind them, get in, lock them down, um, and sort of CC them into position. It's pretty much unescapable. And at least for the moment, it does also work when they're mounted, although that is going to be changing in a future update apparently. And then we have Sandstorm. This is basically your escape ability. And it is one hell of escape ability. It throws you back a really, really long way, enables you to really get out of most situations. And um, once you start activating the animation, it's basically uninterruptible, so you can almost always get out. And then your ultimate, Trap Prey, um, basically enables you to fling your dart on an enemy, it locks them in, and then drags you to them. So it's sort of a, quite an efficient way of getting over. It's got a really short cooldown, it says 22 seconds there, but there's actually a, a, a 3 second reduction down in the things. So it's sort of actually 18, 19 seconds, um, and yeah, it's quite effective for basically locking people down. It also pulls people off the horses. There's a few other things on this one specifically. You can use this on horseback, so it basically works in exactly the same way, but you can activate it on horseback. You do have to complete an extra set of the seasonal challenges to unlock that though. Then we have Sand Walk, which is essentially it's just a speed boost that you get after using Sandstorm. And then you get your little daggers. Instead of having a block, you basically get to fling these little daggers. They're actually really quite effective. I, I, I quite like them. And they do do quite a lot of damage, particularly uh, sometimes nice if you just stood in a unit of shields. You don't actually engage in a fight. You can just sort of th slowly throw daggers at the enemy. Really not a bad way to go. So how does the class actually play? It's obviously very fragile, and it really plays a lot like a unit of dual blades. You don't have the invisibility, so you're not really going to be sneaking up on people in quite the same way, but it does enable you to target enemy heroes who come too far forwards, particularly if they're on horseback. You can sort of target them, lock them down, and then drag yourself to them, and then use Scorpion Snare to basically lock them in place. Um, and then you can use your Leap and Slash to get your damage in. So that's why it's kind of quite ineffective for sort of targeting isolated heroes. Obviously, it's a light armor class. In any sort of serious melee fight, you're going to be going down pretty quickly. You're quite fragile. Now, on my build, I've ended up going into full strength. Now, you might kind of wonder why is that? Well, there's a few things. I think this class's normal attack is actually slashing based. And even though when you first look, you may look and think, Oh, that's um, piercing based. The ultimate is piercing based. I think it's actually blunt for the uh, for the smoke bomb. You may end up thinking that, okay, so I need to be doing piercing damage. But actually, your primary damage attribute is leap and slash and the normal attack, and that's actually slashing based. And I think that's where it becomes it becomes more important. So for me, I've gone for a full strength build. I think that gives you a higher damage output than going full agility. Obviously, it's slightly. Um, buffed by the fact that I've got some other runes on the stuff, which is giving me some extra um, bits as well. I'm obviously not getting any of the bonuses currently with the weapon, but that's why I've got 
uh, one with slashing damage and slashing AP, although it would have been nice to have a legendary one. But the crafting gods were not that kind to me. So let's hop into a few battles anyway. Let's see what the class is like in combat and see if we can sneak in a few kills. So I thought we'd kick things off on the Imperian Sands, which is the updated Reginopolis map, which I must say, I don't really like. I much prefer the original. I know they've kind of got rid of the sea point and all that, but uh, no, I'd rather have the original if it was me. Anyway, using my 40s, pretty standard game. Just kind of wanted to highlight some of the strengths, but also some of the weaknesses and kind of some of the mistakes I keep regularly making with this class. And so you kind of get a little bit of an idea of some of its pros and cons. Anyway, trying to sort of flank round, trying to see if these stalwarts are going to come with me. 40s are great, but they're not really a solo unit. But thankfully, these stalwarts are more than happy to come along, and that's kind of good for me, so I'm happy to stick with them. Anyway, stalwarts come across the front and block our path, and so I can get my 40s in position and start to stabbing in them. You can see them hitting the shields and getting little bits of damage here. Now, this is kind of, for me, the first problem with the class, when I'm comparing it to a heavy armour class, like, for example, my Polax. I can use my daggers to get some throws in, but if I was on the Polax now, I would be much more comfortable flanking around and just doing a lock of a strike straight into the back of those stalwarts. The enemies would likely engage me, but they likely wouldn't win. And then because of the knockdown I'd get, it would push the enemy stalwarts into my 40s, kill them quite quickly. In the end, once the enemy heroes get sufficiently distracted, I can do that. But one, it takes me a lot longer to deal the damage to the enemy units than it does for, say, something like a Poleaxe. And I get a lot less sort of stun or knockdown abilities, i.e. lock of a strike, uh, my bill hook, the pushback. Which means I can really sort of decimate clumps of stalwarts really quite quickly in a way that I just can't do with something... Uh, like this Chain Dart and Scimitar. So that is something you have to consider. This isn't really very much of an anti-unit class. Although the little daggers are quite nice because you can stand in the shields. Not very effective against enemy stalwarts, but against enemy, you know, halberdiers, spears, anything that's not really got a shield, it actually is genuinely quite effective and hits reasonably hard. Nice of being uh, set on fire there by so I, uh, some of those damn coconut throwers. Anyway, managed to capture the A point and we're back on the offensive. Using my stalwarts in the same sort of way, bracing them into the bottom of these um, palace guards. A little bit of a concern about the amount of, uh, sort of coconut throwing grenades coming in, but nothing we can really do other than to try and keep pushing forwards. And again, bit of a limitation of this class. Not really a pushing class, not really a frontline class here. You know, and arguably I think a lot of people get around this by just using ranged units and stuff like that. Which it does work, you know, it means you can hang more at the back and target and stuff, and then just target enemy heroes as they flank round. But I've always been a bit of a frontline fighter, so for me, it doesn't really work that well. We use our trap prey to pull ourselves through, and then here we go. This is where the class does a lot better. We're able to really keep the enemy hero locked down. When you get those isolated fights, like that hero gets himself caught on his own, then the class comes into its own. Really easy to catch up with, trap, and lock down enemy heroes. And that's where this class just absolutely beats anything. You know, it's like a dual blades. And I think that is a fair summary of this class. It plays a lot like a dual blades. We're able to get into here, look, and actually get a bit of damage in with our hero, but the bulk of our damage is coming from our 40s. We can lock down the enemy chain dot here. Unfortunately, I was on cooldown for a little bit, so we do get a little bit of damage in just with our leap and slash. We can eventually come down, and then we can stab him just with a few daggers, as we then get stuck into the Janissaries, which I must admit, do hurt quite badly. You don't have to get many shots from these Janissaries to get yourself killed. And there we go. Clear through the unit. Slightly uh, slightly dodgy friendly Trev there, but hey-ho. Move that round and on to the final point. And again, this is where I think the class does well. Immediately just lock down enemy heroes. Isolated enemy heroes. Try to stop them to get on point. This is where this class just as brilliantly. Bob, lock him down with a trap and prey. Hop over and go for the kill. And there we go, we can keep them off the point. And this is where this class does well. Open fights, sort of more isolated heroes where we can get stuck in at, and that's where we go. And there we go, victory. Class does much better in that sort of fight than those narrow frontline street fightings we had early on. Second half of a game on Hidden City, very similar situation to the end of the first clip. Most of the units are depleted, fighting for the final point, lots of straggling heroes and kind of opportunities here. Did manage to get the treb in, but we can immediately lock down this longsword, and there's pretty much nothing that Longsword can do in that situation. And that's where this class does really, really well. It's all about timing your attacks, timing your opportunities. And getting stuck in, bang, another hero dead. It plays just like a dribbler. I know I keep saying that, but it kind of just does. 
<laughs> and this is where they're classed as well. And then you've got stuff you can't really deal with. You can hit them a little bit just with some um, um, some daggers. I unfortunately get locked down by another chain dart and cinema. Cinema? Or scimitar? In the corner. And unfortunately, the camera really pans into the building. And I can't get myself out of that one. One respawn later. Coming back into the same final point. Still having not captured it, but slightly running out of time on the clock. We can start to push in. Trying to find again our opportunities, trying to see if we can just isolate down some of these enemy heroes. Don't really want to get involved with the units. Try and go for the musket, but he manages to clear the corner in the time and he pulls his javelins out with him. And then we're just basically fighting on the final point. Trying to decide where I want to go, getting stuck in into some of the frontline fighting. Trying to use our sort of high burst damage to get some of these units down. And just a combination of melee and daggers. Um, there we go, another longsword down. Didn't quite get the kill on that one though. And you see we're just trying to clear stuff off point. And this is where it's far better than something like a pole axe. And we can just CC him into place. Oh, as we get hit by our own chain dart. Can we get out of it? Go on, have him, have him. Oh, and he gets out of the fight. <laughs> you can see that escape ability being uh, quite powerful in terms of being able to escape fights. But it's not enough for this little musket. So we can lock him down, get the damage. He tries to run. Dagger, 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 dagger. And we machine gun him down with a few daggers. <laughs> the daggers are quite fun. But a dual blade manages to lock on me and take me down. So, is the class any good? Is it worth unlocking? It is decent. It's not as powerful as I thought it was going to be after playing it on the PTR. On the PTR it seemed absolutely crazy. And it still can be. It's certainly, once you get to chain it properly, and you can sort of get in, get quick burst damage kills and then immediately you sort of escape skill you're out of danger then it can be pretty powerful in that sense i don't know if i'd necessarily describe it as overpowered it's more the case that it's a little bit like the maul it's just an annoying mechanic to play against because it has so much stun lock and cc that you have almost no control over when you're facing one of these it just makes it a frustrating experience more than anything its damage potential is good, but it is of course very fragile as light armour, and it does struggle to really work on any sort of frontline fighting. Um, and I think that's true for all light armour users. And so, kind of in that sense, I don't think it's a class really for me, because I like to be sort of a frontline melee fighter, getting stuck in, you know, with my shield maidens, with my Dao, whatever unit is I'm playing. I like to be kind of on the front line rather than that guy sort of picking around the edges as a light armour user. But either way, it is a fun class, and you can see how quickly you can pick up hero kills. Do let me know what you sort of think about the class. How have you been finding it, either playing as the class or fighting against the class? So yeah, do let me know in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conquered Blade content. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all on the next one.